this is Stacy from TrulyMajestic.com. Today we're making that flower arm knitted blanket. Now you need to start off with a regular boring arm knitted blanket, the kind that everybody has made and there are loads of tutorials on. However, if you don't know how to make a basic blanket, stick around till the end of the video and I'll show you how to do that as well as how to felt your wool roving in the washing machine or dryer so it won't be shedding everywhere. So for this part, I've started with a blanket. I'm showing you the front and the back in the screen until I had some technical difficulties, but it'll come back. And I am just pulling loops through. So I have a loop in the front and I reach through the back of the blanket and I pull more yarn through to make another loop. And I keep making these loops and it's basically a chain stitch and then go around the design. So you should be able to follow pretty easily what's going on. I tried every angle possible. This was like just impossible to properly show. So I've given you a front and back um, video of how this was done. Like I said, anything is possible. If you're arm knitting um, a basic blanket and you just want to add a spruce of color or some design, it can be anything, stars, triangles, rectangles, um, cute little animals, anything, then this is the way to go. So I have, I've probably used about 20 meters of yarn for this design, or um, as far as kilos go, that's about half a kilo or about one pound of wool roving. And by the way, all of my wool roving is already felted. However, it does still shed a little bit. So you want to do this where you don't mind having fuzz around. Okay, now you can see I'm going to add some green because I need to make the stem and the leaves. And I've just done that. Oh, by the way, to tie off the back, you just need to tie off these knots, cut them so you don't have tails. But because this is arm knitting yarn that I'm going to be using for loads more tutorials, I haven't cut it and I don't want to break my yarn. But if this is something you're doing and this is it, you're not going to keep knitting with it just finish it off, weave in the tails or make knots and so you don't have loose floppy ends. So I'm going to pull green through and the same way just make loops down for the stem and then I'm going to be doing something a little bit different for the leaves and you'll see when I get there the leaves um, are a bit loose and they will change shapes with the blankets because they aren't fastened down um, completely. They're just very loosely fastened. So it's a little bit difficult to see what I'm doing, but for the leaves, I'm going to be pulling three very, very big loops up from the base of the flower stem. So one, the biggest loop, and then I move up the leaf a little tiny bit, pull out a second loop, and then a little tiny bit, move up the leaf and pull out a third loop, and then fasten it down with a final um, chain stitch stitch. Thank you. 
Hello, this is Stacy from Truly Majestic. Let's felt up wool roving in the washing machine or the dryer, and this is how. Now this wool roving I have is already felted, but I'm still gonna go through the whole method with you so you'll have it down exactly right. So the first thing you need to do with your unfelted wool roving is swirl it around into a nice little um, donut with all of it and then we're going to tie off the ends so it doesn't turn into a mixed up tangled up mass when it's in the washing machine or the dryer. Once all your wool is in a round donut you need to fasten off the ends so one end should be on one side of the donut and the other one should be on the other side. And we're just going to tie a very loose knot. It shouldn't be so loose that it will fall out and it shouldn't be so tight that you can't take it out at the end when you're finished felting. So it is very loose. Now I'm going to do the other side and do the same thing. With the end, I'm just gonna tie a very loose knot and then we are ready to take it to either the washing machine or the dryer. So I only have a washing machine here, but I'm going to explain the process for both because they're very similar. You want to, if you're putting it in the dryer, you want to spray it down with just water. Just spritz it around. It doesn't have to be totally wet because wool felts with friction. So this just helps create more friction and it gets those fibers damp so it can um, get in and felt them. And then you wanna pop it in the machine on warm. Do not do hot, that will felt it like mad and you'll have very hard felted wool. Put it on warm and start your machine and then check it after about five minutes. If it's felted enough, you can take it out. If it's not felted enough, pop it back in for another five minutes and you can keep checking it that way. The washing machine is a little bit more tricky, but for the washing machine method, you want to put your wool in the washing machine and wash it on a delicate cycle or quick wash, whichever one has a shorter amount of time. And you need to wash it with a full load of other clothes. This is because if you wash it only on its own, it will felt up like mad and then you'll have very hard felted horrible wool and you definitely don't want that. So you need to put in a comfortable size to fill up the machine like you would normally wash. And when it's finished, you can just dry it on the line or inside. I would not put it in the machine again, um, in the dryer, because you've already felted it up once in the washing machine, so there's no need to felt it again in the dryer, or else you'll have a really tight felt. And you want a really loose, fluffy felt, just enough, enough sorry about that, to stop those flyaways and stop it from shedding like mad everywhere in your house. So this is what felted wool looks like. It's very sturdy, but it still is puffy, fluffy, and it won't shed everywhere. And it'll last a long time if you arm knit it up into a blanket. And the good news is your blankets can also be washed in the washing machine the same way, on a quick wash or a delicate cycle, and then after they're finished, dry them. Don't put it on a high spin speed because that will really flatten your wool and then you'll have to fluff it up by hand, which takes hours. So that is how you felt wool in the washing machine or the dryer. I hope this has helped. This is what your wool should look like after it's slightly felted. It's got a lot of bounce, it's very sturdy, and it's ready to go for the project. So let's start casting on. You can cast on by tying a simple slip knot. And we want to cast on the number of stitches, which is the length of our mattress. So I'm going to just guess, and I'm just pulling the yarn through the loop and then sliding my arm through, pulling it through the loop, sliding my arm through, as you can see. And I'm gonna pull as many stitches as I guess my mattress is long, and then I'll check it out. And if I don't have enough, I'll add more. If I have too many, I'll just unravel some so I have a nice length to fit the length of my mattress. By the way, if this video is going too fast, this is YouTube and you can always slow it down in the settings so you can see what I'm doing at your own pace. 
So I've adjusted my stitches now and it is exactly the length of my mattress. We're going to sort some problems. Your cast on should look like this. It should look like a braid or a plait, but sometimes the understitch starts popping up and you see these little bars. We don't want those. And so we're going to fix them just by simply pushing them back to the back side. Very easy and simple. And then give your um, yarn a tug and you have your nice braid. Now that this is complete, we have our cast on row. It is the length of our mattress. We are going to turn it upside down and we're going to be working with these little bars. So I'm just going to pull my yarn through each bar and make a loop. We don't do the first one because that's already attached to the loop that's sticking up. So we're going to go right to the second one and pull our yarn through gently and make a loop about the same size. And we're going to do this the entire way across. So I'll just let you guys watch for a little bit to see how I'm doing this and then we'll skip to the next section. Okay, that's enough making stitches. So we want to take this whole thing after it's all got loops in it, flip it upside down so our braided side is facing up and we're going to work through the loops now with it facing this way. You always skip the first stitch in every row. You knit the last stitch but you always skip the first stitch. So we're going right to the second stitch and we just pull our yarn through the back of it to the front and do this the entire way across. Try to make your stitches about the same size. The tighter you make your stitches, the tighter your mattress will be, but this is enough wool to be two layers thick on a double bed. So it is quite thick. And let me tell you guys, this wool is so warm. After sleeping on this for one month, it is incredible how warm this is. In fact, I didn't even need the extra blankets when the weather got cold like I normally do and I don't sweat anymore. So this is really amazing stuff to sleep on. After we get this completely knitted the entire way across, then we always knit the last stitch, which I'm just coming up to. You always knit the last stitch, but you skip the first stitch. So this last stitch we're just going to knit once, and these are knit stitches that I'm doing. You just pull the yarn right through the side of this and the last stitch sits sideways on the blanket. It won't sit nice and flat like the rest of them. So I've pulled that through. I don't knit the same thing again to start the new row. I skip that one and go to the second one all the way across. Do this for the entire blanket all the way till you have just about enough yarn to do one more row and then we're going to be casting off. If you come across any problem areas of wool where the bits are falling off, simply just stick them back on and rub them between your hands to felt it back on and then continue with your knitting. So here's what my blanket looks like after knitting most of it, half of it, sorry. And this is more of it. And then finally, almost all of it with just enough to do one more row. So now we're going to be casting off. We do that by skipping the first stitch as usual, pull a loop through the second, and now we're going to pass the second loop through the first one and then drop it off like this. And we're going to do the same thing the entire way across. Knit one loop, pull it through the back loop, and then that's nice and tight. And it will make a nice braid pattern across the top. So your side sides of the blankets, the top and the bottom, will all have the exact same kind of braid looking pattern. Okay, enough of that. Let's skip now to the last few stitches. So to do the last stitches, we just carry on and then the very last stitch, 
we are going to pull the extra yarn through this last loop that I have and if it's a very long tail you can cut it if it's just a little bit long just pull it cinch it up and then weave the tail into the these stitches it's okay if you have a really really long tail it can just be woven into all these stitches even if it's like the entire length across it will be hidden now this is what it looks like on the bed. I knitted these stitches very tight, so it actually shrunk the blanket a little bit. If you make your stitches bigger, this would have been a bigger mattress topper, but I made them smaller, so it's just a little bit too tiny for this bed, but that's perfectly okay, because there's only one person sleeping in this. So we need to fold this up next in half. I wanted two layers and then we're going to put it inside of a duvet cover which means no sewing it's just a quilt cover kind of thing and you can find these online very easily they're called duvet covers they don't cost a fortune and you can just tuck in the extra underneath your mattress topper when you're finished this is what it looked like when it was finished it's in the duvet cover now and then completely snugged up it is about three and a half inches thick it is very thick as you can see and it is so warm so this is where I got my wool I went to world of wool and they are based out of the UK and all under natural wools and then we're going to sort all of the stuff in the natural wool according to prices low to high so that's how I found my wool. I didn't want a black wool, I wanted a white wool just because I like white wool. So I just picked one of them. <coughs> there wasn't that much difference between them, I just chose white eider top. And I wanted 10 kilos or 22 pounds for one mattress topper, which should be about the size of a double bed if I would have knitted the stitches a little bit looser. So if you want to change the currency, you can go right to the top of their website and you can choose currency by US dollars or euros or great british pounds so I'll just put it on US dollars so you can see the difference if you want to see how much you're going to pay for shipping you can also go right to the top of their website and on the left side there is a shipping and delivery button so world of wool always gives you a discount according to how much you buy so the more you buy the more discount you get so for this mattress topper which was 10 kilos or 22 pounds of wool was $186 without the shipping on it. So that was a really good deal because if you look at mattress toppers and calculate how much is usually in them, most mattress toppers have a quarter of the amount of wool that I've put in mine or half. This wool is so warm. If you know someone who needs to be warmer at night, please share this video with them. Nothing compares to sleeping on wool. I have to tell you that. I've slept on memory foam and regular spring mattresses. Nothing even comes close to comparing to sleeping on this much wool. Just one more thing before I go. I have also lots more tutorials that are not on YouTube that are on Skillshare and you get two months free of, for joining Skillshare if you use the link in the description. And when you do that, you don't get access just to my content, but you get access to thousands and thousands of creators' content from anything you can think of, from filming, creating websites, art, painting, sewing, like anything you can think of is there. And you get to watch as much as you want of any of the courses for as long as you want because it's a monthly subscription and it is very reasonable. So I hope you'll try it out using the link in the description and I will see you next time.